Hi all, welcome back to part two of my game against I am Dr. Danny Kopek. So, we had reached the stage where he just played knight c4 and he just lost the two bishops because I just played knight g4 and snapped up his bishop on e2. So, this is actually quite an interesting dynamically balanced position now. I play here bishop h3, just pinning that knight on g2, and after queen f3, He's starting to threaten now g4. So what easy way is there for me to stop g4? Um, let's have a quick look actually at queen c8. If queen c8 just f5, so he's really increasing his space and he's locking in my bishop. Big advantage to white, could, could be emerging here. So anyway, I retreated the bishop all the way back, so carrying on my provocative kind of play, saying for him to come and get me. He plays now g4, saying, I'm going to come and get you. And after knight f6, he now plays knight e5. So, you know, what started with just losing my center pawn, he's got a big pawn center and nice pieces in the center, nice central control. All these pieces very harmonious. So, and also he's threatening immediately knight takes f7, so I need to do something about that. So I play rook gf8 and after knight h4 he's eyeing as though he's going to take on g6 so I'm waiting for that little blow now for him to sacrifice a knight for two pawns because once he does that these pawns are going to start marching even more he's just going to flatten me like the bunny I am trying to remove all my counterplay and that's just one way of increasing the advantage systematically just marching the pawns ruthlessly on the king side against my king. So I played king g8 and now he strengthens his position a bit before preparing this knight sacrifice. So putting himself nearly beyond the feet before going on to the attack. After bishop b7 now he strikes the blow. He sacrifices a knight for two pawns. So is the bunny going to be bashed now? So he's immediately attacking my rook. Where can the rook go? I move it to f7 and he plays knight e5. I play rook f8 and he seems to have a really good grip on the position. In fact he toys with me now by playing knight g6 again and after rook f7 he now plays though f5. So these pawns are ready to march. He's got a nice entrenched knight on g6. So how can I create complications, which is the instructive theme of beating a stronger player. In fact, in this position, there's a vicious tactic, which I'm, I might have missed during the game. The vicious tactic, I wonder if you can spot it. I'll give you five seconds if you want to stop the video here. The vicious tactic I missed is knight takes e4. So let's have a quick look at this. If queen takes, then queen g3. And now if queen g2, simply taking on g2, king takes. And Ribka seems to think black has an advantage after bishop takes d5. Check. Say king g3. e6. So this would be a nice way of sacrificing the piece back. So there's a lot of pressure on white's position here. And white's f5 pawn is being undermined. But I sacrifice a piece in a different way, which is not as good. I still get two pawns though. I play knight takes d5. So this is my first stab at creating some complications. After e takes d5, bishop takes d5, he plays now queen f4. I really don't want the queens to be exchanged. If the queens get exchanged, the game will be less complex, and he can increase his pressure on e7 luxuriously just by doubling up rooks and just hammer me in a, in a riskless way. So I tried to avoid that scenario, but in doing so, I made a big concession. I played e5. The big concession is I'm blocking in my own bishop now on g7, and he can simply retreat now to queen g3 with a seemingly luxury attacking position from 
from which um, there is very little risk again. Anyway, I try and cheer myself up by attacking his rook. So bishop c4, and after rook f3, I was a little surprised because now he's letting me play e4. Perhaps he was provoking e4, so he can now play rook f4. So now my e4 pawn is also a target. And his knight on g6 is protecting that e5 square, so there's no bishop e5. So um, here, though, strangely, you know, the the engines, Ribka, seems to think black has a slight advantage. But uh, in the game, I really thought I was much worse here. I played bishop f6, which probably doesn't help my cause too much. Because it's kind of encouraging him to play for h4 and g5 and squash me. He plays queen f2 and I protect my e pawn a bit more by playing bishop d3 and I plays h4. So is he going to squash me here? I really didn't want that to happen. Now one preventive move um, of consideration is rook d5. Another one is c4. But remember, you know, these these engine type suggestions, you know, engines have no fear. When you're faced, you know, with this kind of pawn avalanche on the king side in a practical game, it does create a certain amount of fear. And it's here I put another spanner in the works, or I was hoping this would put another spanner in the works. So creating more complications. So as I say, this in the ideal world you would crush people, you know, positionally or tactically, and you, you wouldn't give them too much counterplay. Here, this, this does create complications now, this next move. Um, it's probably not a very good move um, from a theoretical point of view. It's not really mentioned um, by Ribka. Um, a more prudent move would have been, say, Queen d7. So let's have a look. Queen d7. Does that hold up white a little bit? Or can he still play g5? In fact, g5, and this is starting to look like an advantage for white. So maybe what I played was interesting from a practical point of view. Um, actually, I'll give you five seconds here. Can you spot the crazy move I did play to create complications? So if you want to stop the video now and try and guess it. The move I played was bishop g5. So I'm sacrificing a whole bishop to trap his rook on f4. And there was a way, though, after he took that bishop and I took back, there was a way for him to get a big, huge advantage here, which I think he did point out after the game, is just queen d2. Let's have a quick look at queen d2. So if I take, takes queen c6, he's got now the very powerful move, bishop e5. Now with threats of queen g5 and queen h6, my king is being blown to bits. His pieces are very, very dangerous. And if I try and stop... His queen coming to h6 with rook h7, he just plays queen g5. So this would be quite a poor position. Thankfully, I must have really, I don't know, freaked him out a bit with this bishop g5. So that's another advantage of creating complications against the stronger player. They get a bit uh, rattled because, you know, maybe it starts making them think that what other moves is this person capable of? And it starts getting them paranoid of the wider spectrum of possibilities maybe and that causes a certain uneasiness so in this position he played actually f6 so that's not particularly great because I take his rook and after bishop takes f4 I simply play now queen d7 so he's given me this fine opportunity to attack his g pawn and also maybe threaten queen d4 in some variations and snap up f6 because his king is also a nice target for gaining a tempo with check and it's here he disastrously blundered. But in fact, at this point in the game, Ribka thinks, you know, Black's got an advantage, well, uh, on brief analysis, uh, about depth 13. But what he, he played was queen h4. And now I did play this check to save myself from being mated and also picking up the f-pawn. So this um, queen check was very, very handy. And here he just fell to bits. He played knight e7 check, and I didn't mind this, because although he's going to temporarily skewer and win the exchange, I'm, you know, doing very well now after queen e5. 
huge advantage to black because after he takes here and queen d4 check um, I've got all sorts of menacing threats now That's just you know he did actually resign here in the game so let's see if he had played on with um, king g2 for example then e3 queen g5 for example rook g7 and you know what is white doing now you know this g pawn is in trouble so it was a remarkable you know transformation i hope you enjoyed these two videos on beating a stronger player um, by creating complications and please leave any comments on youtube thanks very much